natural. She has a pulse. Isabel heard someone yell as both consciousness and pain returned to her. She began crying immediately, wishing her torturers would just let her die. Still see you, read the text message, causing Alana to clutch her phone to her chest while she scanned the area in search of whoever was doing this to her. Seeing no one, she looked back to her phone to find two new texts, can see you need more, and that's better. Faith struggled getting the trash bags into the narrow condo garbage chute. She cursed herself for not cutting the body into smaller pieces. What else can I do to get you to notice me? Elijah yelled up to his crush from outside her bedroom window. Even with his insides hanging out in his hands, the bitch could only bear to look at him for a second. It's just a nosebleed, Arun said aloud, stuffing a fresh tissue up his nostril. It's just a nosebleed, it's just a nosebleed, he repeated more and more desperately as the red soaked tissues piled up and the edges of his vision began to go black. Nikolai's bulging muscles were exposed for all to see. He won't suffer long, one of the doctors muttered to a colleague who had never seen the effects of radiation poisoning firsthand. Hello little spoon, Danny whispered as he wrapped his bulging arms around his lover. Prison was a living nightmare for someone as small as Jeff, but the worst part by far was Danny. Mrs. Stokes always stayed in her office after hours to help remedial students, especially those eager to improve their lousy grades. You're the reason my dad beats me, her worst student admitted to her while pulling a large knife from his backpack. Flustered by the dirt her husband had tracked all through the house, Frances decided it was best to confront him after calming down with a bit of gardening. She wasn't quite sure what to do next when she found the freshly buried body where her chrysanthemums used to be. Isn't he such a beautiful little boy? Clarice cooed from the rocking chair, leaving her sister Adrienne racked with guilt for waiting so long to visit. Judging by the overwhelming stench in the nursery, the infant body Clarice was cradling hadn't been beautiful in weeks. Gerald pushed the cotton swab slowly and carefully into both ear canals at once. Leo kept screaming, even after two sharp painful pops left him unable to hear himself. I want you to smile every time you look at me, Elizabeth said to George as she wiped his tears away. Her knife slid through his right cheek like butter, just as I had with the left. Alan was a lifelong adrenaline junkie pushing 70, and he knew he had to find a less physically taxing source of the feeling that kept him going. There was no bigger rush than that first bite of the human adrenal gland, but his method of extracting that vital hormone always left a heavy body to dispose of. Omar's greatest wish was to die alone. He screamed as he rattled the bars of his tiny cage, knowing too many viewers were enjoying his suffering for that to happen. Excuse me sir, can you point me to the exit? Jorge asked the wrinkled foreman yet again with an even wider smile. Miguel sat down, solemnly removing his hard hat and meeting Jorge's blank gaze, pained by the sight of the first worker to lose their mind since the mine collapsed. Francesco owed the Mafia an arm and a leg for helping cover up what he did. Eventually the hitman came to collect, but Francesco had only raised enough money to pay for one lamb. Maxime's eyes were fixated on the well-muscled construction worker going about his work, pivoting the truck's chute to allow the wet cement to pour. He screamed through the duct tape as the new sidewalk neared completion, his last thoughts of how many unsuspecting people would soon be walking over his grave. Eloise was having the most wonderful dream, walking towards a paradise she saw off in the distance. Bystanders at the scene reported the woman had walked right off the wharf without hesitation, eyes closed and smiling as if she were asleep. Our boss was confident enough in his bomb-diffusing abilities to cut the red wire. The muscles in his hands kept contracting around the scissors by pure reflex after the explosion scattered the rest of him in all directions. I always give my baby what she deserves, 
said Arnie as he pumped premium unleaded gas into Christine. I warned you not to cheat on me, Arnie added as he stepped back and lit the match. As he gazed into the eyes of his beloved Rebecca, Charlie knew he'd never forget these last few moments together on the balcony. The time had come to say goodbye, and their eyes remained locked until she hit the ground. Don't worry, the box will be nailed shut and wrapped I chains so nothing can ever get out, Tony reassured a terrified Carmella. She clawed at the inside of the box all the same once it hit the lake and began filling with water. Connor's captor finally stopped slicing, satisfied that enough of his prisoner's body had been covered in paper cuts. Time for a nice soothing bath, the man whispered as he carried Connor towards a tub that reeked of vinegar. Callum regained consciousness 10 minutes into the procedure, just in time to feel the stainless steel instrument clamp down and tear the molar from his jaw. Oh good, you're awake again, said a man Callum had never seen before. Fiorina slammed her car door shut, jammed the key into the ignition, and turned on the engine, relieved at having outrun the screaming lunatic that was chasing her. Someone did something to your car. Tobias shouted, the woman's vehicle coming into view just in time to see the explosion. Patricia remained vegan as long as she could, but eventually gave in and told the butcher which cut she preferred. She would die of hunger in that cell if she held out any longer, and her left hand was the least useful part to lose. The last thing Sasha ever saw was the half-knitted sweater in her hands. Greta was forever haunted by the sight of her big sister holding up the unfinished turtleneck, laughing maniacally, knitting needles protruding from where eyes used to be. All hail the Chosen One, the High Priest proclaimed as he lowered the crown onto Ahmad's head. Despite the volume of the crowd's applause, Ahmad clearly heard the frantic beating of his own heart right up until the moment the High Priest cut it out of his chest. Once the final few twists of the screwdriver brought the lengthy job to its end, Gunner stepped back to admire his work. Those boards wouldn't budge an inch, and neither would she. Tanya barely knew the man touching her naked body, which only made her heart beat faster. His hand tightened around her throat, the sadistic bastard smile and as he pressed the stethoscope to her chest and listened for the effects. Mommy. I hear someone under the house, Millie's son insisted as she put him to bed. Fabian couldn't properly scream now that his wife had sewn his mouth shut, and he wondered if his son could even hear him trying. Jake stared at the mirror from the barber's chair, watching the straight razor produce trickles of blood that mingled with the shaving cream. His convulsions briefly tested the strength of the straps around his wrists, but the fiend continued shaving layer after layer of skin unimpeded. Brandon swore he could make out at least a dozen distinct voices shouting over each other in the cafeteria. Paige, Heather and Sean looked to each other with grave concern before reminding Brandon that they were the only four people there. As the tattoo gun's needle filled in the few inches of untouched skin Royce had left, the tattooist reminded him again that the work was permanent. Don't care anymore, Royce muttered. Endorphins numbing the sting of both the buzzing needle and the shackles grinding the flesh from his wrists. Zara's first time breastfeeding outdoors traumatized her for life. The knife at her throat left her with no choice but to let that brute in the alley suckle until he was satisfied. Luke looked directly into the camera as instructed, trembling and stuttering through the entire audition. You're perfect. The casting director said with a snap of his fingers, a cue for his assistant to start the chainsaw. When Carey awoke for his first day as county coroner, he immediately began preparing his mind for the bodily horrors he was sure to see. He found himself utterly unprepared when he pulled the sheets off to reveal rotting flesh, suddenly understanding why his legs felt like they'd fallen asleep. Pete and Pat kept sawing at the trunk until the giant toppled to the forest floor. The towering man the twins had abducted had been resilient, screaming and clawing until the very moment the serrated blade finished cutting him in half. 
Clyde waited for the crews to go home before he snuck onto the worksite and began prying up nails with his claw hammer. I'm so sorry I fired you, the foreman sobbed as he held out his mangled hands for mercy. But Clyde was too busy unlacing his former employer's boots to care. Young Sophia enjoyed the warm lights glow the best she could through closed eyes. She missed the sun, not having seen it since the bad man glued her eyelids shut. The wind was more intense than anything Angela had ever felt, and she was giddy with the thrill of it pushing her involuntarily backward. Rick was never quite able to forget how windy that day was, or the horrible shriek that made him look up just as that poor woman went over the rooftop's edge. When the water began to boil over, Chef Olivier knew it was time for the meat to enter the pot. He pointed his gun at the freshly scrubbed drifter, nudging them towards one more final bath. Yulia never imagined she would end up selling her body to pay rent. She stared at the missing pieces in the mirror, keenly aware there was only so much she could sell. Rufus owned the junkyard for over a decade, but the little boy inside him still loved watching that car crusher work its magic. There wasn't a single person he dragged to the yard that it couldn't handle. As Julie stared at the naked, motionless body of her husband, she pondered what life would be like as a widow. He jolted awake when she took the first bite of his flesh, but the straps were too tight for him to escape. The chemo left Bob so thin that he was forced to make a new hole in his belt. Satisfied with the belt's tightness around his neck, he looped the other end around the wood beam in the ceiling. This spine-chilling horror stories are also available in audiobook hardcover and paperback on Amazon and in Goodreads, make sure to check it out. Links are in the description box below. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel, so you won't miss out any of our future videos. Thank you for your support. This is Reddit Joe channel, your everyday Reddit.